What do the wealthy invest in that other average people do not? Well, it's really interesting. Usually this information is very private. I've spoken with 1,200 investors individually on phone calls, and this is information that they usually do not share. But we're gonna pull back the curtain today and let you know what the wealthy are invested in today and how they're allocating their wealth. It's gonna be really, really awesome. This group called A21 is a private group of investors that you have to have a high net worth of over $10 million to be a part of. Each year they post a report of how their members are allocated. And I think one of the reasons they do it is so that we can break it apart and see what are people that have a lot of money doing to help protect and preserve their wealth. Now the reason this is important, not necessarily that they're trying to become even more and more wealthy just to have more, but it's to preserve the wealth that's there. So they're very interested in what's happening in the market and what is going to take place in the future. So we'll jump into it here. Go ahead and smash that like button. We're gonna go over it in a, in a couple of steps here. We have a great quote for you at the end. A quick disclaimer, this is only educational. I'm not your investment advisor. It's gonna be a lot of fun. It's gonna be education. Let's jump in. Okay, so as we jump in here, you can see this chart here of how it breaks down from the report of where people are putting their resources that are high net worth. Now you can see the highest part of that pie there is real estate at 27%, stocks are at 25%, and you have private equity at 22%. So that is the kind of the lion's share there. 75% of it is in those three assets. Now we're gonna go through them one by one here. Uh, the first one, real estate, that's obviously our business. We do multifamily real estate. There was an additional study, another study that came out a little while ago that talked about people that net worth of over 100 million. So again, this report is from people over 10 million, but over 100 million, it said that that same amount, 27% was invested in commercial real estate. So again, we're not just saying these people have large portfolios of single family homes, talking about commercial real estate. So why would people prefer commercial? Well, you can see really from this chart, uh, particularly in the single family versus multifamily, that it's a much more stable asset class. So in 2009, the worst point of the Great Recession, single family uh, homes where there was about a 4% delinquency rate, meaning people were at risk of foreclosure at the same point, uh, those with 60 units or more in a multifamily building, uh, it was 0.4%, so 10 times less. Much, much safer, much more stable. There's some really unfair advantages of real estate. Um, so you have you know, tax benefits, inflation hedges, you have all kinds of things that just allow you to use leverage and just really be able to do much better through real estate. So that's why a lot of really wealthy people like investing in real estate. Second thing is stocks, so 25% in stocks. Now, if you look at the stock market, the stock market has had a 600% rise in value over the last 12 years, which is just crazy. It's just a phenomenal amount of growth. Um, I will say this about investing in stocks. Warren Buffett, who's a great stock investor that I follow, he says, it's better to buy a wonderful business at a fair price than to buy, than to buy a fair business at a wonderful price. So again, when you're looking at things, try to look at who has a durable, durable competitive advantage. He calls it a moat, like a moat around the castle that it's gonna be very difficult for someone to come in and try to steal that market share away. If you think of Coca-Cola, they have a huge brand. They, people are well known, they're in every country of the world. It's very difficult for you or I to come in and try to compete with Coca-Cola, right? So you're looking for that type of advantage uh, when you're looking at a particular company. Um, another thing is private equity. That's the third thing, 22%. So these are things that, uh, again, are not publicly traded securities. They could be other business deals. They could be private placements. They could be things, uh, ATMs. It could be uh, sponsoring films or doing other sorts of businesses that are just not public companies. Maybe it's angel investing or other types of things. And typically how you find out about these deals is you go to events and you network with other investors. So it's really important to just keep your eyes open and keep looking around at kind of things that are out there that could be really helpful to learn. Um, then the next one is 13% in cash and cash equivalents. This is the dry powder, right? This is if things go poorly in the economy or we have crashes, they, you know, the wealthy have dry powder. They have money available to go buy stuff. Uh, when we had the last Great Recession, um, you know, there were houses going for $30,000 in Phoenix and they were going mostly for cash because a lot of people needed cash. Credit dried up, 
there was just opportunity to buy stuff if you had money. And a lot of people had money available, but um, you know, having some cash can be really helpful. As you can see it here, 13% of net worth is in cash. Uh, you go down to the next one, it's a little bit of a head scratcher for me. This is fixed income. Um, I wrote a note here, it's like, no. But uh, some people like just having fixed income. The challenge today with bonds or other fixed assets such as annuities is as interest rates rise, or especially as inflation rises, uh, interest rates can rise, which makes bonds with a lower interest rate actually worth less. So we have had a bull market for 40 years, which has been phenomenal for bond values, but what happens if bond values start going up again? The current bonds are worth substantially less and they may not even keep up with inflation. So, uh, but for some people, they're old, they just wanna have a fixed payment and that's what they're doing with some of their funds. Another one is hedge funds, 3%, so a small amount have uh, people managing their money on more of a hedge fund strategy level, which there's all different strategies of hedge funds, but that's what some are doing. The last one I wanna point out is the cryptocurrencies at 1%. Now, I thought it was really interesting that of these high net worth, only 1% of their total net worth was in cryptocurrencies. Now, some may have more, some may have less, but that means if somebody was worth $10 million, that means they would only be having 100K in uh, cryptocurrency, which sounds like a lot, but that's like if your net worth is 100K, it'd be like you having $1,000 in crypto. And I know a lot of people that have a lot more of their net worth in crypto. There was actually a guy I met at an event recently who sold his house in 2016 and put it 100% into Bitcoin. And he's done very well because Bitcoin has done very well since 2016. But if you look at what highly wealthy folks are doing, there's some diversification, as you can see here, and they put it in different things. So something to consider. So kind of reflecting on this, I think some takeaways for me is that the highest allocation to this was real estate. Uh, it's really you know, not a surprise. It's an unfair asset class for people that can afford it. Uh, you have higher returns, lower risk, you have an inflation hedge, and leverage can be used to buy real estate. So I wanna share this quote from Warren Buffett with you. It says, rule number one is don't lose money. And rule number two, is don't forget about rule number one. Um, I love Warren Buffett and that's so true. If you just simply don't lose money in your investing, if you invest and you find ways where you don't have a lot of losses or any losses, you're just gonna continually do well over time. So I wish, you, wish that for you, my friends, just that you invest. As you invest, you continue to grow your wealth. Um, if you're interested in what I did in this video when I spoke with a thousand uh, millionaires individually, it's a lot of takeaways I think you might find interesting. Check out this video here. And uh, I wanna see in the comments, what are you investing in now to grow and preserve your wealth? What are the steps that you're taking now? Um, again, consider subscribing if you made it this far. I look forward to seeing you on the next video.